Hello everybody, welcome to the Gyrocopter Flying Club. Subscribe and select alerts for updates to my daily aviation content. This is part 20 of the history of the gyroplane. In this film, we look at aircraft that came about from the year 2000, most of which form the basis of the majority of aircraft sold and flown today, and none based on a 70s chopper. The US market is very much more diverse as the experimental category still provides freedoms that isn't available in other markets. So in the US, broadly speaking, the aircraft you've seen throughout this series are still able to be built and flown today. That isn't the case in Europe and specifically the UK. Here, the single seat market has only the AV-18. The AV-18 was designed by Peter Lovegrove and the AV-18 itself being a modified version of Lovegrove's Cricket Mark VI. The AV-18A is open framed and powered by Rotax's 582 two-stroke motor. Kits are available from Galway-based Mike and Cannon, and the AV-18 are fully compliant to BCAR Section T. You can see echoes of Lovegrove's previous design, the Cricket. However, despite that, the design acceptance process still took three years to complete, largely for the analysis to clear the CAA. Because it's the CAA who retain the authority for investigation of new gyroplane designs, which is unlike microlites and kit-built aircraft, where that responsibility is delegated to the British Microlite Association and Light Aircraft Association respectively. This is quite a key distinction and the cause of frustration to many in the gyroplane world, coincident with BCAR-T, and it's all about influence and scale. In the US, the popular Rotorcraft Association has always been representative of gyroplane pilot and community interest, and the UK chapter, unfortunately, was lost some years ago. Its replacement, the British Rotorcraft Association, has never had design authority for gyroplane. The problem becomes one of resource because ultimately the gyroplane community is so very small in comparison to light aircraft and microlites that representation is poor and the time and ability to spend on gyroplane engineering is proportional. To make matters worse, the CAA are responsible for new gyroplane designs and in the grand scheme of other aviation matters, the gyroplane has limited traction. To make matters even worse, the British Rotorcraft Association imploded with politics around 10 years ago and is only now just recovering, and so now a gyroplane voice is even harder to find. The Light Aircraft Association are very keen on helping gyroplane pilots and builders and liaise with the CAA, but with limited resource, they do like to see credible, well thought out plans and they too are also mindful, having been more than twice bitten. Accidents aside, bents and open frame gyros were prevented from being built as new projects because the authenticity of the plans being used to build them was lacking and with no design support from a recognised manufacturer, it didn't seem sensible to go down that rabbit hole. Of the two-seat aircraft, the only aircraft sold today in the UK either in kit form or fully built are the Auto Gyro and Magni brand aircraft, and you can see reviews of all these on this YouTube channel.